good. Yeah, or black with a purple logo. Like, honestly, anything other than purple. I just don't need purple. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but I just Pur- don't Purple's do a great conference shirt because it stands out in the crowd. I yeah. think I think if we used it's- our elegant themes pink, it would also be great conference shirt, like, in terms mm-hmm. of, like, getting people's yep. attention. But, uh, but yeah. yeah, we probably should have some other options. But if All you right. want me to wear it on, like, a daily basis to the shops, yeah. maybe just, like, another color would be ideal. White, gray something like yeah. that. White yeah. shirt with a white logo is what I yeah. found best to stand <laughs> white. We'll do white shirt with a white, like gl- glittery logo, yeah. which is barely visible. Actually, oh. black that black and black look is quite nice when people, yeah, you know, it is like it, cool. it's just a little bit black. I feel like David's trying to start this thing. I know. I do know that. I do think that we're live. I'm looking around on Facebook to see see if we actually are live, and we can let you know people know. Let them let them join. Do y'all see where we're live on Facebook yet? Yeah. I had to like. I had to push play to get it to start, which is weird, but um, I saw it. All right. But yeah, we can can give people a few minutes. Come on in. I I didn't get like a notification or anything, which is. Leslie's joining us. Hi, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. All right. Let's see here. I want to make sure that I've got it. Oh, whoops. How do I post as me? Yeah, post it it somewhere. You got to click on that little down arrow, then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm still not seeing it, so. It's live. Let's go. Maybe oh. I'm just a Facebook I'm, loser. I'm with you, David. I'm still trying to find it too. I'm hunting. Maybe, maybe one of our two compadre and compadrettes would post the link to one of the Facebook groups, and then we can all join it together. Yeah. Um, hey, everybody! Welcome to episode 97 of Divi Chat, and we pulled a wamboozle on you, and we're coming live <laughs> to you on Facebook instead of YouTube. If you're our YouTube followers, we apologize that we did not give you any forewarning. Come join us over here. Uh, Every now and then we do go live on Facebook. um, And today is one of those days. We've got a great topic. The title of this topic is Staying Healthy in Web Design. And uh, it's one of those topics that seems to get a lot of attention and people like to talk about because you know what? It's super important. Um, before we dive off into this today, let's go around the horn here and say hi to everybody. And we're going to start with ladies first. Hi, Sarah. Hey, guys. I'm Sarah Oates from Endure Web Studios. You can catch me at endure.com.au or Endure Web on the socials. Awesome. So glad you're here. Hi, Nathan. Hey, I'm Nathan B. Weller, I'm the content manager for Elegant Themes and uh, we do our fair share of web design in the process of creating all of our content. So definitely in the healthy word or web design category for this one. Awesome. So glad you're here. I know, Nathan, I think you were on our long time ago episode where we talked about this a very similar topic and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I know, I know it's something that you're passionate about. Yeah, very hey, much Josh. so. Josh. Hey everybody, Josh Hall here coming to you from Columbus, Ohio. You can check out my web design business stuff at intransitstudios.com. And if you want to see what I'm up to with Divi tutorials, courses, and all that kind of good stuff, hit me up at joshhall.co. Fantastic. So glad you're here, Josh. Hey, Corey. Hello, Corey Jenkins. Happy to be here. Uh, You can find me at aspengrovestudios.com, divi.space, potentplugins.com, divi.chat. Snapchat. <laughs> Happy to be here. So glad you're here, Corey. I'm, I'm really not on Snapchat, but I, I do like making to- sometimes, you know. Corey, Corey, I just don't get to see you enough during the day, man. I know. We, we haven't talked glad at all today. Here. <laughs> all right. My name is David Blackman with Aspen Grove Studios, TV Space. Seems like I just heard this somewhere. WP Gears, and I'm super happy to be here. Um, it's a topic that is near and dear to my heart as well, Nathan. I'm right there with you, you know, staying healthy, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, all the way around is really important, especially when you work, you know, like most of us here do remotely. And, uh, we don't have a 
office full of office mates and stuff. So, um, yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm just saying hey to the Divi chat. I feel like we need Tim to be here to explain what health means for web design. <laughs> Josh, I think we're going to let you do Why? that today. You're going to be our resident strifler. Go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, I mean, yeah, we could take this in a few different directions. I know we've hit on, you know, some similar subjects in the past, but I guess there's like you just alluded to, there's mental health, physical health, emotional health. And um, I guess, do you want me to just throw something out there to kind of get the ball rolling? Does that sound good guys? Or Sure. Do Go it. For yeah. it. Come on. So something I've really challenged myself with recently, something that's more practical that everyone can work on is posture. Um, I have really let my posture go over the years web designing and I did not realize how bad I like hunch over when I'm coding and a couple different things I've been doing recently. One is my main screen. I was kind of eye level with it, but I found out when I was coding, I would be like hunching over and I didn't really realize this until a uh, part of my course was I, I recorded myself doing a sales call. And I noticed in that recording that when I was looking at the screen, I was like hunched over uh, pretty bad. And I, that really, I just didn't realize like, wow, that, like I, I tend to hold a lot of stress and tension in my neck and my shoulders. And, you know, this can happen with anyone in any industry, but I feel like as web designers, we're often like so engaged in the screen that we're, you don't know what your body's doing. Um, and posture has, it, there's so many important things that come out of life with posture, just with the way you stand. And, um, I went to a chiropractor recently who's a client of mine and he's like, dude, your neck is like three inches, like above where it should be. Like my posture is really kind of warped a little bit. So that's just something practical that I'm taking into effect in my life. As far as my health, um, I'm doing some so steps. How, to how are you doing that? Right? Like, so how do you <clears throat> actually remember because yeah. my problem with posture is like, I can remember and I can like do like all the things, but then as soon as like you start engaging in something, you just start. Yes. Like, yeah. You start doing so that. how do you, yeah. do you have like one of those weird back things that they advertise? On <laughs> I did. I got a back, I got a back brace on did Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like 20 bucks. It's does okay. It it's, it's yeah. It's, it's okay. It's, it's kind of uncomfortable, but it does force your shoulders back. Mm -hmm. Um, I started doing that. So I did a few things. Uh, one was I tried this brace out just to make sure I'm literally holding my shoulders back. One, I'm, I've got a standing desk I'm on right now. It's just a little like, uh, it's not a big one. You can see my regular desk is back there, but this is a little standing unit that I have in the corner of my office that has helped a lot. Um, so I'm like, a lot of times I'll do emails and videos and stuff here. And then the other thing that has really helped is my screen. I was pretty eye level with it, but like I said, I would kind of look down and hunch to code. I just dropped my chair. So I'm kind of looking up a little bit, a bit now that way, when I kind of lean in, I'm not leaning down. Um, so those three things have really helped out, but it is, it's like a conscious effort to just make sure I'm not hunching over. Cause I could have tried out for the hunchback of Notre Dame and got it. It was bad. <laughs> um, so now, yeah. Now let me, let me ask you a question. Do you feel like your eyesight contributes to that? Like you're trying to get closer to the screen or could be, man, that could be, yeah, yeah, I'm a little, like, I'm terrified to go to the doctor. I feel like I have good eyes. The glasses clan. We're yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed like in the mornings, like when I'm still groggy, I, I do that because like my eyes aren't fully awake. I, I have apparently pretty good eyesight still, but in the mornings I, I do that more. Like I'll lean in a little bit more than I do later yeah. in the day. And like, I'm not fully awake. So I, you know, I'm, my posture is bad later in the day. I'm like sitting back and pretty, pretty straight up. But. Yeah, that could be, I've, I've, I've kind of limited the, like I've taken my brightness on my screens down the, the past couple months to think about that. But yeah, it could be, I, I'm definitely a little, I'm a little scared about going to the eye doctor about that. Yeah. Yeah. Spending 12 hours a day looking at the screen, like has to have yeah. some effect, but certainly I, could, doesn't I, help. I have, I have bad <laughs> news for you, Josh, uh, regardless of what you do when you hit your forties, you're going to be coming. <laughs> you too, Corey. Because I had perfect 2020 vision until in my 40s and stuff. So yeah. now I'm part of the glass clan. <laughs> uh, well, I think we're, this is a good place to start is physical. Yeah. You know, staying yeah. healthy and stuff. Um, as you can see, you know, at the top of this nice chair. Um, Posture is one thing. I, I agree with Josh. I got a standing desk about a year ago. Corey and I did. And uh, I got to tell you, I love it. I stand actually, my... actually, I didn't. You and you and Tim have one. I, I don't have one yet. Oh, darn. <laughs> Me and Tim have one. I need to Corey get one, though. I do. I keep bugging him to get one. Um, but I love it. I, I 
you know, stand about 50% of the time now and sit 50% of the time. And the other thing that, that Corey and I did was invest in a good quality chair when I am sitting and stuff. Yeah. So, um, I can't believe how much of a difference it really, really does make. Um, I kept buying the $30 chairs from office Depot and Walmart and, you know, every six months I'm turning around a new chair. Um, yeah, I, I was, I was on a milk crate up until a few weeks ago when I got this. <laughs> but I fin we finally got him a chair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And I gotta tell you, it makes a big difference. It really does, you know? So um, I know yeah, that it's, it's important. Yeah, it's like if your job entails riding a bike and you're on a bike 10 hours a day, get a decent bike. And that, that's kind of, how, yeah. you know, how I feel about like a chair or, or a desk, you know, just it, it's an investment, but it's it's a worthwhile investment. Yeah. So on the investment front, um, at my desk, there's a couple of things that make a big difference. I have like this little snake train thing that sits in front of my keyboard. And the reason that I have that is because my wrists, otherwise, when they're on the mouse a lot, especially if I'm doing a lot of design work, will like sit against the bottom of the bench kind of thing. And so then my hand will sit like this, whereas this makes it like sit up. So that was like a $10 investment and that made a really big difference. Um, and the other thing I did was, again, I lowered down my chair and made sure that my hands were just sitting like I had like a good kind of position of things. So I think that that's important to think through because I, I, at one point, it was like my keyboard was too wide. And so then my mouse was off to the side. And so I was in this kind of this position. And then I found that um, I was getting a really short, sore shoulder for a long time. And then all of a sudden I went and got myself a little keyboard from Mac. And what it means is that then my keyboard is sitting in front of me and my mouse is directly in front of my shoulder. And all of a sudden I stopped getting my shoulder pain. So yeah, the some rest of that thing. Stuff can make that's pretty big for carpal tunnel, isn't it, Sarah, as far as keeping yeah, your wrist Yeah, I get level? RSI here. That's just something I've had my whole life. Um, I get a little bit of RSI in my arm if I'm doing too much of anything. And so I just found that, yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. It's like just, I don't know what stores you guys have. Uh, what was it? Home Depot or whatever. We have like office works and 10 bucks makes a huge difference. So yeah. That's my little advice. The other thing I would give advice for physical health I would say go get an eye check. Honestly, like I, I think it makes a huge difference and I try and get my eyes checked every year. We're sitting in front of screens all the time and I think it makes a really big difference to know how you can look after your eyes the best that you can. And on the eye front, um, there's a few things you can do. You can get, um, there's a app you can install. I don't know if it's on PC, but on Mac, it's called Iris Mini. It's free. It doesn't cost any money. And what it does, you install it. And what it does is it changes the refresh rate on the screen and it takes out the blue light from your screen. So it all looks the same. Like the color doesn't actually change very much. Um, and you can always switch it off if it's a problem and you're trying to design color type things, but you, you will instantly notice your eyes calm down. And it's something about the amount of times that things are flashing, your eyes then stop blinking. And so then you get really tired eyes. So that's What's called, that Iris, called again, sir? Ir Iris Mini, I-R-I-S-M-I-N-I. -I if you just Google that, it's a free, it's, you install it on your computer and you can just set it to auto and it will just automatically like, I'm not even joking. Like when I installed it, my eyes just like calm down. And sometimes if I turn it off, I'll notice instantly my eyes just feel tired. But the other thing you can do if you don't like that, or if you're doing other screens on the go that you can't do that, you can get um, glasses now that take out the blue light. Um, and I was just listening to a podcast. I'll link it in the show notes, but um, I was listening to a podcast with a guy called Kale Broccoli. Um, and he was talking about, <laughs> I know it's just his, um, YouTube thing, but um, the, there's new blue light glasses that you can get that are 50% blue light. So they're not yellow. So they're not ugly, but they just look like normal cool glasses, but they take out all the blue light. Um, so I, that's have, what, I have a question. For what's you? the effect of blue light? I, I know like sleep and, and other things. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the biggest things is um, the impact on sleep, but they're also saying that blue light, because blue lights in the sun, um, and but we don't look at the sun we see blue light from the sun indirectly into our eyes but we look directly at blue light through devices and so it's actually impacting the internal parts of our eyes apparently like there's new research coming out saying that blue light is 
basically killing our eyes and our eyesight, which is really unfortunate, but also it's the circadian rhythm thing. So it means that then your body doesn't understand when it needs to start winding down for the end of the night. Um, and obviously we're going to watch TV at night, so that's not going to change. Um, but if we can limit the amount of blue light that's streaming into our eyeballs during the day, if we're going to sit here for however many hours a day, either install that thing or get yourself some of those glasses because they seem like they look pretty cool these days. They, they don't have to be the really ugly ones that first came out. I'm kind of fascinated. I, you can add it to you, your glasses prescription as well, apparently. I want to ask you a question. You may or may not know this. Does it control the blue light in your external monitors if you have multiple monitors connected as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. It's amazing. Honestly, it's amazing. It's free. Uh, there is an upgrade, but I don't know what the upgrade actually does. I have never upgraded it. I just got the free one. Someone else in the Divi group recommended it like a couple years ago, and it's made a huge difference to me. Interesting. Yeah. So there you go. That's my physical things for a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Iristech.co. We will put that in the show notes. Uh, another thing that I do physically um, is I've started incorporating this year, in fact, breaking several times a day and taking 10 minute walks. And it has made a not only massive difference in my personal health, you know, um, but mentally as well when I'm, you know, I, I just get away from the computer, get away from the desk, go outside. I know we talked a lot about being in nature and stuff last time, what it can do for you and stuff. Um, just taking a walk around outside for 10, 15 minutes is a major. And I do it now probably upwards of five times a day. Um, mm. wow. And I only, do, nice. I only do it for 10 or 15 minutes. But I, I used to be the type of person when I sat, I'd get up in the morning, I sit at my desk and I don't move until the nighttime, you know? Um, and so breaking that habit and tearing myself away from the computer and work to go take that short break was a really, really hard thing for me to do. But once I got into the rhythm of doing that and stuff, the benefits have, you know, been massive. I think I've lost about 40 pounds just from walking <laughs> 10 yeah. minute, four, four to five, 10 minute walks a day. So, That's great. You know, it's also good enjoy. just for, for your mind. For I, I know some of my best ideas have happened while on walks by just walking. Yeah. I mean, you hear it all the time about some of the most successful people in the world who just walk when they're t talking about things or ideas and things like that. And yeah, it's just, I know there's a bunch of science that backs that up too about what your mind is doing when you're walking. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yep. What else? What else do you guys do? Anything yeah, else I'm, physical? I'm personally terrible at uh, doing like physical stuff during the work day, during the week. <laughs> um, I'm like, a lo lot of people probably don't know this, but I'm technically like, you know, pretty physically handicapped. I have like a lot of, I had a really bad knee injury um, in my twenties and I have like nerve damage and, you know, I can't do anything impact. I can't run. I can't, I can't do that sort of stuff. Um, I can hike, but I mean, for me to go out like on a hike, go, you know, go out in nature and go on a hike, that's a good like two hours away from the computer, which would be kind of tough during the day. Um, I'm like, I, 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 my, my new thing is I, I try to get up in the morning. I come to the office, kind of check in. I'll hear my family get up and I make it a point to spend about, you know, 30, 45 minutes um, with my family in the morning uh, before they, you know, my son leaves the school and my wife takes off running errands and things like that. Um, physical exercise. I, I try to pack a lot in on the weekends. I'm like, always busy like around the house and you know cleaning out the garage or you know doing landscaping and hiking and stuff so I, I get the bulk of my physical activity on the weekends but um i definitely need to focus on a way during the during the work week to get some more exercise and i'm i'm like very bad about it but you know having kids and you know throwing kids up in the air and it, mm -hmm. you're always on the move so it in and of itself is pretty good exercise but uh yeah <laughs> need to get better at it yeah. And I found I've kind of got away from this, but my goal is to start doing, um, even just like if you take a break during the day to just do some pushups or doing some stretching or just to something that literally just gets your body moving. Cause yeah, if you sit for like eight hours straight, cause in most work environments, people are getting up, they're chatting or they're walking around to different desks and stuff. Whereas we work from home, it's really easy to stay confined. 
and you almost have to like force yourself to get out of that room. Uh, it is different when you have kids and a family and everything, but um, I've definitely, I'm trying to make that a point now to just get up after a few hours or, or a couple hours and just get some movement, just do it, doing something, whether it's just, you know, stretching or just get something to get your blood flowing. Yeah. Me, another thing is just going out back, playing fetch with my dog for 10 minutes and getting outside. I try to do that a couple times a day. Yep. Nice. Awesome. Well, that's quite a few physical things. What about some of the, um, emotional things that we do to take care of ourselves and one final physical thing drink lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and water makes a big difference huge yeah, it does make a... I, yeah, I, 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 thought, I thought that was whiskey you were drinking there i was gonna <laughs> say I was like, it's oh, empty. Yeah. it looks like a whiskey glass <laughs> I, it probably is but it's like drink water out yeah, you do I, water I, during the day I, and I then about three of these a day probably work yeah, yeah. When all the client stuff happens and sites start breaking around four, that's when the whiskey comes out. Then yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's no, I think it makes a big I... difference to how clear your mind can think. Um, and I notice a lot if I have a busy day and I stop drinking water that the next day I'll really struggle. So it's not even on that particular day, but mm. if I start getting really dehydrated, it really mm. impacts my ability to work and even my energy levels. So. Yeah, that's that's another thing that I incorporated this year. Also, lots of water. Yeah, and, nice. Uh, it does. I'm surprised that. Uh, yeah. At, at at how much it does help. So. Um, yeah, I, I I used to get uh, at I used to get at David about that because he'd be drinking coffee all day or something. Coffee, <laughs> cokes, soft drinks. Yep. Water was like. Yeah. I'm, I'm like obsessive about water. I drink about a gallon of water a day most normal days. Yeah. And now I now I am. I'm I'm very obsessive. I, I drink only water now. Matter of fact, if I go out to dinner, I go out anywhere. I'm I'm on the water train. So I'm amazed at how good <laughs> it tastes. So listen, if you're like me and water sucks and you don't like drinking it, <laughs> no flavor. Get LaCroix. I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I did. I got oh. Roy. I got some. What's some soda Water. It's like soda water, flavored soda water. Okay. And I started doing that, and that's nasty as shit. I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a great idea and a good replacement, but it's pretty damn nasty um, until you get used to it. But what it did do was it did give me something a little bit different, and um, and then when I switched back to water, and now. It's kind of interesting what's happened that I don't know if it's mental, psychological or what, but I love water now. Water like tastes really, really good <laughs> before it didn't have any taste at all. So if you drink it and just keep forbearing through, something's going to happen. At least it happened to me to where I, 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 I enjoy drinking it and stuff and I want to drink water. So. Yeah, yeah we, we ended up going to Costco and they have those like um, water coolers and then you can oh, yeah, nice. like, buy that or, or basically they, they give it to you if you sign up for like a, I think it's like sparklets, uh, um, you know, delivery. So we have one of those and then every couple of weeks the guy comes around and gives us bottles, but yeah. it helps us cut back on like bottled water and it's nice and cold and it, it kind of forces you just to drink more water because you have this like big tank of it sitting there next to the, you know next to the dinner table or wherever Well, it's kind of it's like that um like it's in your mind because you see it all the time and kids love those bottle things yeah like, yeah our kids like, have been a lot better about drinking water because because they can go up with their cups yeah. and they think they're all cool like filling up their own cups yeah. and stuff and, and then they well, spill yeah. it everywhere you know on the same on the same note i mean uh one of the things that helped me make sure that because I, I just like anybody else, you know, like I, I tend to have my defaults and drinking a lot of water for me is relatively normal, but I'll go through phases where, you know, I get out of the habit or I'm just not doing as good as I should. And the same yeah. goes for diet. And I found that like yeah. one of the best things I could do to improve my, my, my health, my um, attitude, my mood, everything was just nu nutrition. Um, and I didn't even have yeah. to change too many things in terms of like the types of food I ate. A lot of it was like portion control. And a lot of it was also thinking about balance more than I had in the past. So I use, I use my fitness pal. It's really popular. I think probably everybody's heard of it, but it's just, a it, if you get the premium version, which I have, it allows you to track your water as well. 
And it also, you can track nutrition goals. So it's like, if I want to have um, X amount of protein a day, X amount of this per day or that, um, it can really help you track it. And so all you do is like m most everything now, particularly when you're shopping and stuff has barcodes and you can scan barcodes and it'll tell you how it fits into your diet. And um, that kind of stuff's really nice. And I would say like uh, in, in addition to every other physical thing everybody said, which are all things that I've either incorporate in the past or do a version of now is, uh, is great. But in addition to that, I would say the biggest change I made this year was uh, my wife and I started meal planning really intentionally. We, we use uh, Evernote and we have like um, a big list of recipes that we use. And we put, we put a lot of work into doing like um, the calories per serving sizes per serving, our rating of the recipe, what it goes well with, and then we even used the tags feature in Evernote so that we could do like uh, like themed weeks. So we'll say like, this is our um, Mediterranean week or this is our this week. And then we could buy all the same ingredients and use those in different things throughout the week. And what was great about that is it not only made us healthier, but it also saved us a bunch of money. So if anybody's that's interested cool. in that, that's you know, cool. that's, that's always a good thing to do too. It really doesn't surprise me that you have created this whole thing with like tags and everything. I think that's so <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it's awesome. So that's David, really cool. It's a great idea. David, you had mentioned uh, emotional health. I know we kind of derailed from that, but um, I just wanted to hit on something that I've really been intentional about over the past couple of years, a few years. And Nathan and I actually talked about this on my first um, Divination interview, but I found that celebrating the wins is huge for mental health. So um, typically what we'll try to do, we don't do this on every project, but if we have a big project go live, I've noticed that it's really easy in web design to just be buried with all the incoming stuff or you know, a website goes live, the client is pumped, but then you have a widget down on a site or you have a bunch of incoming stuff that you're handling. And I found that like taking time to celebrate those wins um, practically, we'll do that by just like going out to dinner or just getting out or something and just saying like, that was a long project. My wife's kind of involved now so she can kind of see what goes on behind the scenes. And um, that's been huge because it is, like I said, it's really easy, I think, to, to just get buried with the incoming stuff that goes along with web design and your managing client stuff. And um, if you don't take those times to just stop, relax and celebrate the wins or celebrate, you know, a project going live um, or selling a new project, it, it can really, it can really wear you down. And it can, it seems like it limits the, the fun of doing web design. If you just constantly are you, you stuck in your email and you can't just celebrate a good job that you did. So that's been yeah. a huge for me. My wife and I do something very similar. We don't always celebrate the same way, but like we did this thing where we have like a big pile of um, note, notepad paper, like really small notepad paper. And we have like a big Mason jar and every victory that we have throughout the week or day, or whatever, we write it on a car or write it on a piece of paper and we stick it in the mason jar. And then we take time throughout the year to like pull stuff out and mm. go, Hey, remember that happened? That was really cool. And you know, like, Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about this victory, but that really was meaningful. So it's everything from like, Hey, I had a good checkup at the doctor to, I hit my goal at work to finish my first, you know, painting for a client in my wife's case and stuff like that. And that, that really, you know, it's like, you're right. You know, when, when the small, even small things, small inconveniences and small frustrations can overshadow even large victories because the negative stuff just has this way of taking on more weight and substance in our and in, in, in energy in our minds. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. That's great. I like that little trick. That's great. Yeah. I, I think we even, we even try to do the same thing like internally in our company. I mean, it, it is so, so easy to focus on like, you know, Oh, this, this went wrong. And, um, but you know, we try to like sometimes take in, I think, take things into perspective and like you know sometimes david and i will go like man if if we would have known like two years ago where we'd be now we'd be like super, you know <laughs> super pumped about it and excited and and just kind of you know soak it all in and realize how how blessed we've been and how awesome of a journey it's been yeah, yeah we we, awesome. we we don't celebrate our wins enough <laughs> no. i actually like the I think idea sometimes it's yeah. hard I Sometimes it's really hard not to just roll into the next job. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you can even towards the end of a job, you can think, yeah, I'm totally going to celebrate when I get to the end of this. And then all of a sudden you get to the end and because you've been holding on so tight getting to the end, other stuff's piled up. And all of a sudden you're like, I just got to like move right on. So I yeah. think, 
Yeah, it's great. I, I think do. Well, the note card thing is practical in terms of, you know, not forgetting. Cause if you have like yeah. this big jar with brightly colored notes in it, it's hard yeah. to miss. Like if you're walking through the room, yeah. so occasionally you'll just walk by and like pull one out and go, oh yeah, that was nice. And you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's great just cause yeah, if, if you go out to dinner or you do something that's going to take a couple hours, that's, it's a, yeah. it's a commitment. It's a time commitment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you. if you just jot it down and even if it's something small, that, that yeah, that's great. I yeah. love that. So I've got a thought around stress, which I guess probably is a little bigger okay. um, in some ways, but about reducing stress. And so I've been trying out deep breathing, which I don't know, maybe it's going to sound a bit woo-woo or whatever, but um, I've been doing a lot of reading around the gut and how the gut impacts the brain and how, you know, stress impacts the gut, impacts the brain, you know, that all of this is interconnected. Anyway, one of the big things that they say you can do is just stop and deep breathe and that that then allows your system to just calm down and just slow down a little bit. And what I've found is that often during the day, I can find myself even breathing fast. Like I feel like I'm just kind of racing, like things are moving a little bit too fast or my mind is like really focused or I'll eat lunch, but I'll just like shovel it down and then keep on going to the next thing or I'll go out and hang the washing, but it's like my mind is racing or I put on a podcast straight away and like my brain engages in a podcast and it's like I never stop. I never just actually like have a moment. Um, so I've been trying out deep breathing. There's apps on your phone or your watch or whatever. There's lots of different places or you can just count in your head or whatever. Um, but that idea of just breathing in, holding it, and then breathing out for, I don't know, a minute, two minutes at max, it actually makes a really big difference to me and the feeling internally of my stress levels. And apparently it then can impact your gut bacteria, which can then impact your whole system. Um, so that's just wow. one little thing that I've been that's trying great. to work on. That's awesome. Yeah. I do that as well. I had a, um, um, I think a therapist several years back, teach me a bunch of techniques for deep breathing or not a bunch, but like a couple that were really helpful. And, um, I, I can attribute to the its benefit. Like I definitely do it if I'm having a stressful day or if I just need to focus I, for whatever reason, like, like you said, it's really easy to get overwhelmed mm. with stimulus. You know, like a lot of us will listen to audiobooks or watch a show while we're working and, after a while, you might notice that between, you know, getting chats on Slack and Facebook and email and you have an audio book and you have a thing that none of your thought has really gone below that, that surface level thought and, and to do your best work, you need to do that. You need to get there. And yet yeah. it can also, I think staying at that surface level. And again, I don't really have like a source to cite for this, except for my own experience. So take this with a grain of salt, but in my experience, surface level thought in and of itself can be stressful. So like if you never get a chance to think deeply about something and find peace about like wrapping your mind fully around a subject, um, you know, little things like that can cause doubt. Like I'm getting ready to publish this blog post and I'm not sure I completely understand the topic I just wrote about, or I'm getting ready to launch <laughs> this uh, product. And, you know, I was a little yeah. shaky on some of that code. Like and maybe that would go away. Yeah, exactly. So like, I think not going deep and not calming your yeah. mind can contribute to imposter syndrome because you don't have that piece of, no, I did think deeply and thoroughly about this yeah. before I, I committed to it. So okay. I reckon on that topic, like the, a few things match that having some time to deep think. So one of the things that I've in, implemented is when I go out and do the washing, I don't take my phone and listen to a podcast. Mm. That's been like a big thing for me. Right. But it's only five minutes, but it just, so maybe there's a five minute thing where you would normally have another stimulus that you could just remove. But the other thing that I think I'm not great at, but I'm really wanting to work on is giving more buffer time in my jobs so that mm. I'm not rushing through them because often I, I think I may, um, what's the word? I, I think positively about things. There's a word for it, but I've just, forgotten it um and I, I'm over optimistic that's it and Delusion. so because I'm over optimistic pretty <laughs> much, right? so like if I if I know I need to go somewhere if I don't look at Apple Maps I'll be like yeah it's gonna take like 10 minutes for sure and then it's like 20 minutes because it's yeah, like yeah. in my mind everything I'm just like yeah it's no problems no worries like a client comes to me and says can you fix this thing and I'm like yeah that's fine like I can totally squeeze that into my day but in reality, I'm not building enough buffer room. And if I build a bit more buffer room, I'd have more time for that deep thinking where I could not feel like I've got 500 things coming at me and I could just stop. 
and actually think a little bit deeper about it, which is then going to mean I don't have that continual feeling. Yeah, and that's like everything is there. That's huge. Like if you go for a walk and then you're checking email, you're on Facebook and you're responding Mm -hmm. in Slack, that just defeated the entire purpose of that walk to get out, clear your mind and just deep think. And I think that's why some of my best ideas. It is hard. Yeah, I'm going to call out David on that because he'll be like, "Hey, I'm going for a walk. Call me, or else." (laughs) (laughs) He's like walking. Well, it depends what the walk's for, right? Yeah, Yeah. I mean, but in in five days. (laughs) Yeah, mine's been for exercise, but yeah, I do love the idea of not taking anything with me. So I'm going to try it. Try it out. You just wait, Um, David. You're going to come up with your like 50th company man when you when you take a walk. With no distractions, you're going to have some good ideas come up. It is. It's so true though. I mean, that, that holds true. You just, if you don't let your mind just slow down and think about some of the deep work that is really important. Yeah. You just like Nathan and Sarah just said, you're just on surface level stuff all the time. I, yeah. I want to talk about, I want to touch on a couple of things, not to kind of backtrack, but the breathing aspect. Um, it is, it's amazing to me. I did breathing a few years ago. Um, I learned, somebody taught me breathing, I think it was somebody who did yoga, and it it was called Ujjayi breathing, where you actually go deep into your gut and then back up. I wonder what that would do for the gut, Sarah. Um, Mm -hmm. But I remember whenever I did do that, and I was intentional about breathing, how much better I felt all the way around. Now, here's the crazy thing as beneficial as it was for me, you would think I'd be jumping out of bed, breathing throughout the dang day, but life kicks up. I get going, breathing's out the window, exercising's out the window. It's so hard to just kind of, kind of stay on track and stuff. And um, isn't that the thing with everything though? Like uh, I have some health issues and I know that I feel the very best on grain free, dairy free, sugar free. I just feel amazing. Right. But bread's freaking amazing. And yeah, I bread's awesome. It, right? <laughs> and so, like, I can mostly say dairy-free. I can uh, 70% say sugar-free. But grain-free, like, hello. But I feel <laughs> amazing when I live that way. And so it's that kind of thing. Like, you understand that deep breathing helps you. You understand that going for a walk helps you. You understand that yoga makes a huge difference in your life. Like, you can understand these things conceptually, but somehow something stops you from actually doing them sometimes yeah. when you get out of the habit, like you drink your water and then winter comes and you're like, eh, water's not so nice. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're out of the habit. When it's well, that's, yeah. That's what I was going to uh, bring up the word habit. Um, I also like the words ritual and routine. Mm-hmm. So like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of studies out and, you know, I don't know them off the top of my head. So feel free to Google and fact check me anybody. I'm, I'm pretty, um, pretty sure about this, but um, there's a lot of studies out that show that uh, creating good habits is better than setting goals. So like a goal is a, like hitting a goal or a milestone that you want to achieve is a byproduct of consistent behavior. What is consistent behavior? It's a habit, you know, and we all have like default ways that we live, you know, like I tend to wake up in the morning and do a certain number of things without thinking about it. And you know, we, I do this thing where like, I'll occasionally sit down with like a, um, a pad of paper and outline my day and go, here's how I've been doing it. How that's my def- Those are my life default settings right now for my every day. You know, like there's my, this is my wake up routine. This is my breakfast routine. This is my start of work routine, all these different things. Now we don't, none of us start up WordPress and just go like install WordPress and just go, yep perfect just the way it is you know (laughs) we change the default settings we design it we customize it we make it work for our needs and so i would you know recommend highly that everybody take a look at you know the the unconscious habits rituals and routines that they've developed and ask themselves if those things are designed to hit their goals in life and if they're not focus less on the goal because it's easy to set goals and go Oh yeah, I'll get that one day. But if you're, if the, the way that you're living your life day in and day out through your habits, rituals, and routines aren't contributing to that goal, then that goal is, it's effectively worthless. You know, you're not actually making progress on it. And when you do, you're doing something that feels alien to you because it's not baked into your life. It's like a thing that you're trying to fit into, um, 
a schedule or routine that isn't optimized for it. That's, so. that's a good point too, Nathan, particularly for weight loss. Like I know a lot of people, they say all the time that it is so much more about habit than goal, because if you set mm -hmm. a goal to lose 50 pounds, you could lose 50 pounds, but then if it's not built in, if it's not a habit, yeah. you're just going to revert or make it yeah. even worse. Um, so yeah, it, a, it, habits just so important. There's a really good um, book that I listen to. I only do audio books because I don't have time for life. Um, there's a <laughs> book called The Power of Habit and it's really good. So it talks all about habits and how to create habits and the actual process of how habits mm -hmm. function in your brain. So I highly recommend that book. I'll put the link in the show notes. And it's interesting. I know there's like, there's like thousands of studies there. Some people say habits start in like a week. Some say two weeks, some say 21 days. I've seen things where it's like a habit will start at 90 days. For me personally, there's like, I have like this two week thing. Um, if I do something for two weeks, it seems to really kick in the habit for me. That's just for me personally. So when it comes to drinking water or sitting up straight or the things that I'm working on, the two week margin has really helped because we're talking about a lot of good things, but if you try to implement this all at once, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. So I would just say, if you're wanting to make some of these changes, just try it out for however much time works for you. For me, it's two weeks. So like if I start running, if I run for three, if I run three times, I'm probably not going to keep on running after that. But if I run consistently for two weeks, like every couple of days or whatever, it seems like that just kicks in. It's like the habit. And then after those two weeks, I just, I get ready to run at, at a certain time. I don't even really think about it. And, and then it takes like one week to get out of the habit. You know? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, I yeah. Have, you go on about vacation a week. and you come yeah. back and you're like, eh. I have a two week threshold where if I want to implement something new in my life, I'm really good for two weeks. I'm like, I can do this. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and then I get to the two week mark and I'm like, oh, this is exhausting. And then that's when I drop it. So yeah, I have to go a, 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 Accountability. <laughs> my, my wife is good about like, you know, accountability for the most part. And like, you know, if, if we're, you know, going through like, you know, we'll do like a cleanse or something and yeah. they'll bring me out in the morning, like a, you know, a shake or something healthy. And she's really good about keeping me accountable and nice. just you know, like, yeah. like in general, like just, you know, um, my thought process staying in that direction. Cause I'm, I'm terrible well, at it, especially, you know, with my mind focused on the company and, and finances and, and things like that. Um, in our household, it's just, uh, I, I, I neglect myself and, and yeah, I'll be the first one to admit that I put myself completely last in our family, you know, which isn't good, you know. That's well, a I good think point. That's a really hard bit. Caring like, about yourself, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If I if I'm not running, you know, a hundred percent or ninety percent or eighty percent, then how am I going to help out the rest of the family? So I do need sometimes, you know, I, I do stop and think, and okay, I gotta gotta take care of myself too, because it, mm -hmm. it is so hard to just put yourself last, and especially, you know. You, you got kids on the weekend, you got soccer, you got family things going on. And then it's like, you have no time to do things uh, for yourself. Ultimately, it just gets kind of crazy. So I think that's why this conver this conversation is so important too. It's one reason I wasn't opposed. I know we've talked about similar topics, but I think it's worth revisiting pretty frequently because yeah, it, it's very easy to just get in your routines and then everything you do. And then you just easily, easily neglect the most important things when it comes to yeah. health, a mental. I think we've noticed at our house is how much our kids, I know this isn't about kids, but how much our kids are picking up what we're doing. So like mm -hmm. on your thought of Corey of putting yourself last, like the thing that I've noticed is there's things that I let myself do too much screen time or I like just demolish lollies. Like it's nobody's business. <laughs> or, you know, like I'll let my kids, I don't know, like they see the way that I'm eating and they see the things that I'm doing. Yeah, and or, what we've noticed lately is they're starting to do some of the, th the bad habits. I don't like calling them bad habits, but the habits that are negatively mm -hmm. impacting our life, yeah. they're starting to do them and it's starting to become part of their core. And I can see in their future that once they're not at home, like I remember when I left home, I ate all the white bread because we didn't have it at home. But I just <laughs> ate all the white bread. And so like I can see there's things in my kids that I can see that as they're getting older, they're going to take some of these things that I wish weren't tying me down now. Yeah. But if I dealt with them in myself, I'd be dealing with them, with them for my kids for their future, which I know that's not part of this chat here, but like if, yeah. if you, the thing that's holding you back is feeling like I need to put other people first, it might be the thing that can help you go, well, it is putting them first because it's going to put their future first. Yeah. Because they're and, copying and, everything I'm doing. Yeah. And kids are very like perceptive. Like if I'm stressed, my five-year-old picks up on it and he's like, yeah. or dad, why are you so stressed? You know? 
Yeah. And that's uh, totally like, like, geez. I, uh, I really like what you're saying, Sarah. And I think, you know, there's to rephrase that a, a little bit. Um, one way that I've contextualized that same kind of mentality is to go to think of like the people that I care about the most. And if there's something that I would want for them, like if there's something that I would want for my wife, why wouldn't I want yeah. that for myself? Like yeah. if I would want my wife to be happy and healthy and, and to have good habits, why wouldn't I want that for me? You know, like I, like I should, yeah. I should care about myself awesome. at least as much as I care about others. And that's a new idea for me. That's not normal for me. Cause um, you know, i I think I'm sure everybody has it differently. I only have the, the experience of, of a, of a guy. So if, I think from a guy's perspective, a lot of times we, you know, uh, you guys, the other guys can chime in on this if you agree, but I think guys get raised with thinking like you're kind of the expendable muscle. You're, you know, you're meant to carry a load for your family, for your friends. Like you're the one that sacrifices or you're the one that picks up a load and does stuff. You're like, you're an earner, you're whatever. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's kind of your job to sacrifice for other people. And if you internalize that message, which I certainly have, uh, you end up going, well, it doesn't matter if I work a hundred hours a week, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, which is like, uh, like Corey said, putting myself last, but then you find out, you know, I'm stressed out. I'm not happy. I got high blood pressure. You know, I'm overweight. You, all these things start to pile up. And when you start to pinpoint what's going on, you know, maybe you just don't, maybe you're not like caring about yourself enough, like, and, and that it's all connected, you know? Um, so that was one thing, which is like, uh, identifying the importance of caring for yourself as much as you care for the other people in your life. And so I had three, three points total. The second point is uh, in terms of bad habits or things that aren't good, it's one thing to recognize them. And I've learned it's an entirely another thing to actually want them enough to change. Um, yeah. I feel like change for me has only ever really happened when I want the alternative more than I want the indulgence. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could probably phrase that, but in terms of like, say dieting, for example, it's like, I'm only going to get better at my diet when I want to be healthy more than I want a piece of pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is hard, right? <laughs> Which is really hard. And I think that's where the <laughs> caring about yourself part comes in. Cause it's like, you know, if I don't particularly care about myself, then I just need, you know, enough fuel to get through the evening. And so, yeah. you know, pounding some pizza while I work late is fine because it gets the job done. But if I'm thinking of myself, you know, 30 years in the future, all of a sudden yeah. that habit doesn't look very good anymore. And yeah. uh, so that was my, my other point. And then Finally, uh, the last thing I want to do uh, along the same lines of like caring about yourself is like controlling your mood. And I just started reading this book. It's called Feeling Good. Mm -hmm. And it's um, it's by David D. Burns. And um, the sub the subtitle is called The New Mood Therapy, the clinically proven drug free treatment for depression. And there's all kinds of benefits to this, this guy's approach um, to like altering your mood, but basically it's like um, techniques on how to recognize, you know, mood swings that are happening, um, identifying and quickly changing negative feelings before they become a real problem, dealing with like guilt, which could crop up from any number of things, like something simple, like, oh, I made a mistake and now I feel guilty about it, or my client's not happy or whatever. Um handling hostility and criticism again something every designer is familiar with <laughs> um overcome you know addiction uh to anything um there's all kinds of things in here and he doesn't um you know it says like the drug free treatment for depression but it's not about you know getting away from medication a lot of people have medication that they they definitely need and shouldn't try to go off of but um i think there's a lot of things that anybody can do without it that's maybe more than you would think if you have the right technique. So that's what this book's about. And I, I've started to dig into a little bit and I think it's really cool. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. And I just wanted to say too, Nathan, like you're talking about the weight of, you know, responsibility and providing for the family and stuff. I found that if you do the things that you need to do to take care of yourself first, all of that will follow. So mm -hmm. I'm, I generally make more money and I'm more productive when I run and when I exercise a little more, it takes more time, but it forces me to get more done in like five hours as opposed to eight where, yeah. uh, you know, if I have some of that extra time. So that's kind of a thought I've really been challenging myself with is 
put first and foremost, the things that I need to do to make sure I'm mentally, physically healthy and everything. And the rest will, it's going to follow. Except, yeah. You know, it's one thing if you're just lazy and you're just like, I just don't feel like working today. I need to do what's best for me. You know, it's, that's a whole different story. But if you're like, yeah. you know what, I need to run, I need to take some time, I just need to take a walk or do something, you know, that it goes a long way. So. Ben, Ben's um, Netflix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, on that point, like it kind of links in with what Nathan was talking a little bit, but I heard recently someone say, one thing you could do when you're facing a decision is ask yourself the question, what would future Sarah want me to do? Yeah. And I know, mm. again, it sounds a bit woo-woo, but like future, even just being like tomorrow, like yeah. in, in terms of like, I'm sitting in front of TV, I really want to watch another episode of this show that I'm watching, but it's like 11 o'clock at night. Future Sarah would really want me to go to bed because <laughs> I actually really need some sleep and I know I'm going to function better tomorrow if I actually have some sleep. But when it comes to the weekend, sometimes I find it really hard to stop and rest and binge some Netflix. Like I find it, I feel like, oh, I should clean up the house and I should... Uh, and but future Sarah would really like me to chill out a bit because it's yeah. going to make a really big difference. So sometimes asking myself that question has meant future Sarah really wants me to sit down and like get this big thing done because <laughs> it is holding so much weight in me because I feel yeah. stressed about this thing. Future Sarah just wants me to knock this thing out. But then sometimes future Sarah wants me to chill out and stop and not work anymore for today because it is not going to help me tomorrow. Yeah, I might get the thing done today, but is it going to mean I can't be productive at all tomorrow because I did so much today that there's no tomorrow and I might as well stop a little bit earlier, have a bit of a rest today and then tomorrow I've got another four or five hours of productivity instead of killing myself on one day. So I don't know if that's helpful for anyone, but that's been helpful for me because it doesn't just push me to overwork and it doesn't just push me to watch Netflix and it doesn't just push me to <laughs> go to bed, but it, it helps me find a bit more balance, which is useful but, for me. I love I that. Ask, I want to ask a question here. Um, what types of things uh, motivate you guys to make positive changes in your life, you know? So whether it's healthy or physical or emotional or what are the things that you, are there any things that you do that motivate you to make a change, do something different other than for me, for me, it's, <laughs> for me, it's a hundred percent my family. Um, you know, from, from the moment I get up, that's like my first thought process is like my family, what direction are we going? Where are we going to be in, in five years? Um, where are we going to be in a week even? I mean, you know, um, what's our plans for the week are going to be, what are, you know, what are the kids going to have fun doing and be good for the family? That, that's kind of what motivates me on, on a daily basis. Um, which going, you know, going back to that needs to be part of the self-care and taking care of myself so I can accomplish those goals. But I, I think what drives me on a daily basis is, is my family 100%. I know something uh, this year, since I started scaling my web design business in, in Transit Studios, one thing I've really thought about is um, the, the people I'm working with, I want to make sure that I'm kind of leading them because they're watching how I'm emailing and how I talk to clients. And when I talk to clients, like we were talking about family earlier, like your kids are watching you. Well, if you run a business and you're leading a team, they're watching you too. They're kind of like your little work kids. So yeah. if you're emailing at two in the morning, you're going to create a culture where everyone's just cool with emailing at two in the morning, which can be really dangerous. Yeah. So I've really taken that to heart about like, you know, it's made me be really vigilant and really think about organization and, and planning and things like that to just become better at that because now I've got other people involved with that. And it's kind of, it's pointed out some flaws that I have and some things that I'm really trying to work on. So uh, the team aspect, that's kind of a driver for me too. Yeah. Awesome. I think for me, um, a lot of my health stuff, so I have chronic fatigue, which means um, if I don't look after my body, then I can't work very well. And so um, for me, the thing that drives me is that I I want to live life with my family. I eventually, I don't know if it's possible, but I eventually would like to heal that if I could, because I miss running more than I miss life itself. Um, <laughs> and so, and so I, I regularly cry when I see people running. Um, and so I think for me, there are things where I want to find balance in my life because I want to do stuff with my kids and I want to be able to say, hey, let's go for a bike ride. But I can't do that 
80% of the time. But if I can make some choices around my health, then we could do that as a family. But if I don't look after my health and if I eat crap and if I don't sleep and if I don't drink water, I can't work and we don't have money. So for me, it's that whole big balance of I need my business to function. And if my business is going to function, I have to look after my health. So in some ways, I'm fortunate that I am forced to have to look after my health because if I don't make choices, then my business won't run and I'll be in bed and my family won't have someone to hang out with them and do fun things. So in some ways, although it's horrible, it's forced me to have to make choices that I don't always want to make. Um, So yeah, um, maybe people out there have health things that are going to force them to make better choices that, you know, is unfortunate, but could help them. I feel you. I feel you on the running. I haven't been able to run in 14 years since I missed. <laughs> yeah, um, one of those things you take for granted, you know. Some people just love running, and I just—it's in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it out. I'm just walking, walking, walking. <laughs> Not a runner. Uh, Nathan, well, did you want to talk or? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, in my answer to your question, I'm going to shamelessly share a piece of my own content <laughs> from my personal blog because I, uh, this is a topic that's very important to me. And um, I wrote a post that pulls an exercise from um, a, a book I read on uh, narrative therapy. And basically, to answer the question, what, what motivates me to make positive changes in my life? It's connecting to my values. So I went through a period in my life where I found it really, I felt very directionless because I didn't really know what I wanted to stand for, if it was worth standing for anything, if, you know, there was anything like uh, super deep and important to connect to. And as a, you know, non-religious person, um, this works for religious people too, but as a non-religious person, I didn't have like a thing to fall back on like, oh, well, I'll just adopt all the values of my faith. Um, I was, you know, kind of looking for something else. So uh, there's this great exercise called the tree of life where it's, you know, different parts of a tree that you illustrate and you can illustrate very poorly. Uh, You'll see from the post that I did too. Um, but basically it's just, uh, helps you think about your life in terms of the things that bring meaning to it and how you spend your time. And, um, I use that several years back to, um, kind of identify the things that were most important to me. And then once I knew what those things were, I was able to start, um, redesigning, like we talked about earlier, redesigning and resetting my default settings and optimizing my, my life so that I was honoring those values. And um, a lot of the changes I made and the desire to make those changes was out of going, you know, this thing, this idea, this concept means a lot to me. Like dignity means a lot to me. I think that's a fundamental value in my life. And so if I can't conduct my life with dignity, then there's a problem. And you know, I think about, well, how, how does that manifest itself in my life? And I know this is getting kind of deep, but that those are the questions I ask myself is like, how, how can I express this value? And, you know, well, maybe I should change this or maybe I should do that, or maybe I should think about um, doing something different. And, and it all kind of sprang from that. That's awesome. Man, how in the hell am I supposed to follow that? <laughs> <laughs> you meant to say, David, the thing that inspires me is wearing no t-shirt in summer. That's how you <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I think for me, what motivates me, a lot of what you guys said motivates me. Obviously, family is one factor. Um, but I think what is surprising for me where I can get motivation. And I guess maybe for some people, they get it like religious and church and through their faith and stuff. But I really get a lot of um, motivation besides there's two places. One of them is great pain. A friend of mine many years ago said, I wish you great pain and great love. And I had no idea. I was like, what the hell? What do you mean? <laughs> I get the great love thing, but <laughs> you, really? You wish me great pain? Um, I mean, being a little bit older now, I do totally understand why you made that statement, you know, because for me, pain has been a, a touchstone for progress in my life. It's motivated me to make changes in my life, probably more than anything positive. Um, but one thing that also you know, affects me and, and, 
inspires me to make change is nature. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just, there's something about nature that just can like, and I, I, the creativity aspect of it or an idea can spark in nature. And then I just feel like, you know, I'm, I'm ready to take on the world, you know? Um, I, I don't know what that is. I'm, I haven't read any books. I haven't done any of that stuff. I just know that for me, um, you know, being out in nature can be a great inspiration to help me achieve things that I normally aren't, aren't, aren't able to achieve and stuff. So, um, I was just curious what you guys, you know, some of the things that, that inspire you guys to make some changes and stuff in your life and stuff. I know we started a few minutes late. Go ahead, Sarah. Sorry, I was just going to say, well, another thing that we've referred to a few times is books. And um, so another thing that really inspires me is just listening to books. Um, so Audible, yeah. great. There's lots of other ways you can do it. I just signed up for Blinkist. Blinkist is this service where they have compacted books into 15 minutes. So someone has gone through and basically taken out the best parts of a book and put it into 15 minutes. And then you can listen to it. And if you want to hear more, you can go and listen to the full book. But it gives you the kind of the key points from, so you can listen to a whole bunch of books. Um, But I find that listening to books for me really inspires me to want to make change because they usually help me understand things that I could be implementing and why that would be important. Uh, Another book that I've been reading is called uh, Why We Sleep. And I'm reading that right now too, Sarah. By, it's uh, Matthew incredible. Boston. Yeah, yep. it's yep. startling. I have that in my Audible library right now. <laughs> it's, I listen yeah. to it while I fall asleep. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have that in my Audible library. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It talks about the science behind how important sleep is. And really that probably as we started this show, we should have started the show with the first thing you need to get it sorted is your sleep because yeah. everything follows from your sleep. And usually mm-hmm. we put our sleep last, but really we should start with a good sleep, which then allows us to do all this stuff during the day and then start with a good sleep. That's how we should be functioning our day rather than finishing the day with a poor sleep. Yeah, we need to start it. We need to do a Divi Chat episode on uh, how web designers <laughs> should sleep or something because there's so many good things we could go yeah, into on that. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I... sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I was just dogpiling. I, you know, there's, there's <laughs> that, you know, from diet to whether you drink alcohol or yeah. what. Yeah, we didn't even touch that. One. Um, if you're on the West Coast or in Colorado, how marijuana affects your sleep, there's there's a lot of science to it. And, and that book goes over all of it. I haven't I haven't dug into it deep, but I got it based on my brother's recommendation. And he went through all the whole book like a couple of times and tore it apart basically. And he couldn't speak highly enough of it. Well, yeah, and I don't want to do your but I mean, how many times have we had a, like a WordPress issue or something's going on with the database and then we sleep on it and then the next day it's like, oh, I figured it out. It was just, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I solve all of my problems in sleep. I'm yeah, sorry. right. Um, I will tell you this, that since I changed my habits and I've <sighs> made habit changes this year with the drinking the water, the exercising, the eating right, which we didn't talk about, um, my sleep has improved greatly. I used to be a go to bed at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And as soon as I started taking those five or so walk, 10 minute walks a day, and I started drinking water, buddy, I'm out at nine o'clock comes around. I'm like <laughs> sawing logs now, which has never been me. So, I hate awesome. to cut things short, but I'm getting the signal that it's time to go out to dinner. <laughs> yep, I see. It. You're not cutting it short. We're yeah. over time right oh, now. Healthy today, there. right, Nathan? I'm yeah. Sorry. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, do we want to forego parting thoughts since we've yeah. kind of been par- parting thoughting it? Yeah. I, yeah, I, that I, was kind of like a version of parting thoughts, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like a whole episode yeah. of parting thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, next week we'll probably be back on YouTube. So uh, if you were on looking for us on YouTube today, we apologize for not giving you any forewarning. So we'll see everybody next week. Take care. See you guys. Bye, everybody.